What's up, guys? Joe at Momentum Watts. Today, we're going to be talking about the different Burromax electric pit bike models. We've got a TT1600, a TT1000, and a TT750. Stay tuned. So while each one of these bikes is pretty awesome, they all have different areas where they shine, and of course, they all cost different amounts. So when you talk about the value proposition of what you're getting for your money, there is a lot of difference here. So let's dive in on each bike specifically, talk about its strong points, its weak points, and from there, you'll be able to figure out which Baromax bike is best for you. So we're going to start off right there with the granddaddy of them all. This is the TT1600R. This is a 1600 watt motor, 52 volt battery, um, and this is a full size bike. Um, I'm a full size guy, I'm about 300 pounds, um, and it's very comfy. This bike is the top of the line model from Burrow Max. It's got everything you're gonna need. It's got working lights, a horn, it's got low and high speed modes, which you'll see in some of the other bikes. And this is also gonna be the fastest and most powerful bike. This bike will be about 32, 33 miles an hour, um, it'll give you about 30 miles of range in saver mode. Um, you could do basically whatever you need to do on this bike, whether it be commute, you know, you want to go out and ride wheelies, you want to do backyard stunting, um, you know, if you want to use it as an actual pit bike to ride around the pits, you can certainly do that. What's really nice and special about this bike, it's got hydraulic brakes, which have a really nice feel to them. Um, and really, they're way more powerful than the uh, cable brakes that you're going to see. All these bikes have front and rear disc, but this is hydraulic disc, which really set this bike apart. So realistically, if you're looking for a pit bike that you can kind of go out and use as like a fun bike um, as an adult, and granted, guys, th this isn't a Suron. Um, it's not a full-size dirt bike. It is a toy, but this by far is the most uh, non-toy-like bike you're going to see here in the line uh, because of the fact that with full suspension, full disc brakes, and 52 volts of power, um, you really can hit jumps, do any kind of things that you really need. Um, if, you know, the budget is not a problem, this bike right now, MSRP is $19.95. This is really your best bang for your buck. This is the bike I would choose to basically do it all. But if you don't need to spend that much money or if you don't need to do it all, there's other bikes in the model range. So let's move on and talk about the 1000R. All right, guys, now I have the Burromax TT1000R. So this was the generation of bike that was released before the 1600. And while this is still a great bike, it's a 1,000 watt motor, 48 volt lithium battery, uh, plenty of range, and it'll probably still do 30 miles an hour. It's gonna get to that 30 a little bit slower because of the lower voltage and lower amperage from the battery and the controller. Uh, and just overall, you can see that this bike is, is a little bit smaller. Uh, I'm starting to look at a little bit more goofy on this bike. Um, but what I really think shines about this bike is that this is the ultimate actual pit bike. So for those guys that are at the races and need to get around, you want a small bike so that it doesn't take up a lot of room in your trailer, something you can you know dodge around pit traffic with. This is probably the bike for you guys. It's gonna have plenty of power to do what you need to do. You can get over and get a cheeseburger, a beer, get to the bathroom, whatever it might be. This bike will do all that for you. But what this bike isn't gonna do for you is that this has cable brakes, not hydraulic brakes. It doesn't have the inverted forks. It's got smaller wheels on it. It doesn't quite have the suspension um, that the 1600 does. So while this bike still agronomically feels good, it doesn't feel quite as good as the 1600. And that makes sense because this bike does come in at a lower price point. Right now, these bikes MSRP for $1,595. This bike comes with all the lighting as well, just like your 1600. What this bike is really lacking is one disc brakes, Two, it's lacking some battery voltage and motor that the 1600 have. And just overall, the size of the bike is much smaller. So for the guy that's not going to be like adventure riding or anything, mobbing the streets, this might be a better choice for you. Whereas you'll save a little bit more money. You're going to be saving about 400 bucks. Um, and like I said, this is going to take up less room in your trailer or your truck if you're actually using it as a pit bike. But like I said, if you're, you know, recreationally looking for something to hit jumps and wheelies and things like that, the 1600 is probably more your ride. So that's the 1000. Let's jump into the 750. All right, guys. And now you might think I look a little goofy, but I can still comfortably ride this bike around. This is the TT350. I'm sorry, the TT750R. Uh, they also offer this in a 350 um, and a 250. And the 250 has the least amount of features. The 350 is virtually this same chassis, just with a smaller motor. Uh, and a smaller battery set. 
So the 750, this comes with a 36 volt lithium battery and a 750 watt motor. Um, this has cable brakes as well, but it does have front and rear disc. It's got a more narrow tire on it than the 1000. Realistically, this is a good budget bike. Um, it's about half the price of the 1600 and a little less than the 1000. Right now, this bike MSRP is for 995. I would really say for <coughs> the kids, this would be a great bike um, for general transportation. So if you literally just need something to go A to B in a small area, this would be something that would work good for you. Um, it, it's more or less, you know, even smaller than the 1000. And like I said, I know I look goofy, guys, but I can comfortably ride this bike around if I had to. It's just not something I'm going to be out doing wheelies on or tricks or anything like that. I wouldn't ride this recreationally for fun. I'd more or less ride this, you know, whether I really needed to. So, again, this bike is going to be more an actual pit bike. So, for the racers that need to get around at the track, you know, whether it be to get to the, you know, get a hot dog, beer, whatever, sound like a broken record here, this is the bike for you. It's going to take up very little room in your trailer. Um, it's, you know, ready to go. Turn the switch on, go. It's got a headlight. It doesn't have the horn, which is kind of a bummer, um, but it does have a good working LED headlight. Um, basically, it's a very stripped down version that'll get you where you need to go. All right, guys, so I'm going to hop on a TT1600R here, and we're just going to take a cruise around, and we're going to talk about all the bikes that we've looked at so far. So let's start with the last bike that we've looked at, which was the TT750. Uh, that is the smallest bike we looked at today. And I really think that before we jump into this, we should really dictate what, we should set the guidelines for what makes a good bike. So you've got a pit bike as if, you know, a bike that you ride around in the pits. That's one pit bike. And then you've got a pit bike as far as what I'm going to call pit bike culture. So guys that buy these smaller bikes to ride around as if it were a bigger bike, whether it be riding trails, riding around the neighborhood, hitting jumps, doing wheelies, things like that. Um, and basically what I'm going to say here is that the TT750 is a great pit bike as far as one that you're actually going to ride around in the pits. It's very small. It'll do just fine for that. But if you're planning on going out and mobbing the neighborhood or doing wheelies or anything, the TT750 is not it. So I say TT750, as far as value is concerned, at 1000 bucks, that's your best bet for actual transportation. Now let's jump into the 1000 the 1000, I'm also going to say, is more of a pit bike to ride around the track, not really a pit bike to be bombing the neighborhood, because the size of the chassis just isn't really conducive enough for an adult guy to really go out there and be comfortable. But if you want the baddest pit bike for as far as riding around in the pits, the 1000 has a whole lot more power than the 750. Now, Jumping up to that 1600. To me, this is the best all-around bike. Maybe I'm a little biased here, but this 1600 can really do it all. It's large enough to really go out and comfortably ride for long periods of time, do wheelies, hit jumps, you know, commute, whatever you need to do. The only drawback on the 1600 is, of course, it is the most expensive bike at 1995. But guys, realistically, any gasoline new pit bike, whether it be a CRF 110 or a KLX 110, those bikes are easily going to run you, you know, 35, 3600 bucks out the door, depending on where you're located. So realistically, I think the 1600 is a great deal for people in the pit bike culture, as far as people that are actually looking to go out and ride these for a good time. You're not just riding it around in the pits at the races. You're actually taking it out, riding trails, riding around the neighborhood, commuting, hitting jumps. The 1600 is really the bike for you. Guys, you can't really go wrong with any of these Buramax models. And what I love most about the Buramax is all the replacement parts are available on their website. So any last nut, and bolt, anything you need, you can buy direct from these guys. It's not like a lot of these bikes now where you can't get replacement parts unless it's one of the big three. Yamaha, Honda, Kawasaki, Honda. Um, these bikes, all the replacement parts are available. So guys, pick up a Buramax. We've got a ton of them here in stock. Feel free to leave comments below or shoot us an email. We'd be happy to help. Guys, thanks for watching.